Thank you so much again, guys, for joining us for a special presentation. My name is Jay Craft, e-commerce expert. Last week, we were joined by Joe Rensing of Conway Resale to talk about pallet flipping. And this week, we're being joined by Scott Zilke to talk about retail arbitrage, also known as the bearded picker. How are you doing today, my friend? Doing great. Uh, trying to recover from a long weekend of RA. I saw some of the posts that you put up and boy, did you get a lot of stuff. So for those of us out there who don't know, what is retail arbitrage known as RA? Uh, what is it to you? How does it work? Um, basically, it's buying an item in a store and flipping it on Amazon or eBay for a profit. Um, most of the time, people think it's clearance. And that's predominantly what I chase is clearance and discontinued products. But there are so many products out there that you can buy full price. And then those are kind of holy grail products because once you start locating them, it, you just buy them and send them in, buy them and send them. You don't even just buy them and sell them. You know, chasing clearance, you know, clearance is going to end. And then you have to find the next clearance deal. You have to find the next whatever. But if you've got those products that you can just continually, you know, hey, I, I'm low in stock. I'm going to go buy 30 more. I mean, 30, 30 more of this, 40 more of that while I'm out just because. So, right. so you've been uh, sourcing for a while now. Were you always doing retail arbitrage, or were you doing some traditional thrifting before that, and then switched on over? Um, I actually did a I, I did a year on Am on eBay uh, full time before I, I found Amazon. You know, I was one of those clueless people. I'm like, somebody asked me, "Why don't Why don't you sell?" I was teaching a Sunday school class, and one of the guys in there goes, "Ma'am, I do eBay and Amazon. How come you don't sell on Amazon?" I looked at him. I'm like. Well, I'm kind of embarrassed. I didn't know you could sell on Amazon. And this was uh, early 2014, and we were going on vacation. And I'm like, I'm gonna read about it. I, I, don't, I was already buying products and signing up before I came back from vacation. Um, the 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 allure of not having to clean stuff, and <laughs> you know, there's some when you're when you're buying a lot of thrifted items and garage sale stuff. You know, there's some. You know, when you just hey, I'll take the sticker off and throw a sticker on it. I'm done. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's something something nice to be said about just being able to slap barcodes off uh, or onto the items and then fire them in. Now, are you doing FBA or are you doing all MF? What's your mixture like right now? Um, it's all Mer FBA. Uh, I did Merchant Fulfilled. The the big crazy video was like one of the few items, the Monopoly for Millennials. Um, I take advantage of the fourth quarter because, you know, not everybody can send in their Merchant Fulfilled so you can find hotter products and take advantage of that curve in price. You know, it spikes right after Black Friday and then it crashes. <laughs> yeah. So if you can get stuff in in that there's a there's a small window and it's it's very risky, but um I actually played it pretty well on, on Monopoly games. Yeah, now that Monopoly game in particular, that's pretty much how I heard about you. A lot of people heard about you. Uh that video on YouTube accrued over 1.6 million views and counting. Uh Give people the, the a brief summary of what you did and, and how you gained that notoriety so quickly uh, during that day. Um, as some friends, I we hang out on all day when we're listening or doing whatever. And uh, one of them said, "Have you heard about the Have you heard about the Monopoly for Millennials game? It's on. It's in the news. It, um, the the House of Representatives lady, Ocasio Cortez. She uh, somebody tweeted at her making fun of her and for being a millennial and and he said, "Man, it's social media everywhere." So I started looking into it. I'm like, you know, I can, if I can, if I can get it. I started looking. I looked on user use Brickseek to find how many stores. And I started looking around. I I called my buddy Shane. And I'm like, "Man, this this product's gonna be hot temporarily. If we can hit it this weekend." And he said, "Let me call my. He used to work for Target. Let me call my friends at Target and see what's up." They didn't have any record of it, and so that that made it interesting that all of a sudden one of the major players on the Christmas season that's without Toys R Us for the first time, doesn't have a game that's in the news. And so as we started looking around on BrickSeek, we noticed that less than half of the Walmarts had it. And we're like, uh oh, this, this is something that could carry, it takes the risk out of it when their supply is already limited. And we and the most we could find at any store was 36. And we're like, this is just, I mean, which is six cases. And we're like, Let's go get it. And we spent, so I, we, I always take videotape whatever I'm doing. And it just happened to be, I got four hours into the trip and I was about to turn around and hit three or four more stores and come home for the night. Uh, when I get a call saying, have you looked at Brickseek again? I'm like, no. He goes, my friend says, Birmingham is wiped out because it updates like every hour. And I'm like, 
because I was going to go to Birmingham the next day and buy them. And so Shane and I both made the decision because he was already out buying them by then. We spent the whole night driving, <laughs> 22 hours in a car. I picked up 216 total. And since I can merchant fulfill them, I'm, I don't know, you get these ideas about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, let's sell some. And I, I put a $63 price on them between 59 and 63 I let the repricer play with it. And four hours later, I sold 130 of them. And you start thinking, I got to ship 130. <laughs> so I, so I, I deleted, I, you know, I put it inactive and, and, you know, carried on with the video, picked up and the rest of them and came home. Wow. Now what was the peak price that you ended up getting? Did the market continue to, to go upward on them? Um, I was actually a week late into it. I have friends, um, who were getting 77 for it. Um, I called it at some of them at 63, uh, more than half of it, 59. And the last 60 or whatever it was, 76, most of them sold around 54 a few days later once I got into FBA. And then the last 20 I just dumped. Um, I'm, I was going to keep them and the supply kept going up. And, and Amazon came out with a, a fee reduction. If you took it to f the four, less than 4495 it was it was one of the bigger ones I'd seen. It was like 11% fee reduction. That is which, huge. Which, which gave it which was the equivalent of selling it at $54. So I'm like, nobody had taken advantage of it. So, you know, I'm like, hey, watch this, $44.95, they are gone. It's, it kept a rank of about 800 in toys in the fourth quarter, which is which is crazy. That's an incredible rank. Now, let me ask, uh, uh, I know somebody on the channel left a comment. They did the math. How much money did you end up making across that, you know, 22-hour stint? Um, It was, the first 130 was 20, it was like 25, 2600 there was, the big the big thing with the video, all the comments were he didn't account for gas. He drove seven hundred miles and didn't account for gas. I'm like, I live in the south. Gas is like a dollar ninety a gallon. I mean, how many do you think? I, I mean, it's like fifty bucks. And I don't know if it's like seventy five bucks, but uh, I ended up making like forty three hundred dollars on the games. Wow, yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Now, uh, for somebody who's looking to get into the RA game, you know, obviously. You know, I mean, what do you tell them? You tell them go in and just start scanning things, or is there some general rule of thumbs for somebody wanting to start out? Right. The first piece of advice is, you know, everybody has interest. You know, everybody, whether it's, you know, whether it's, it's, it could be automobiles, it could be you got kids that, so you know a lot about toys, whatever it is you know about, go scan that. So at least you can get your, your idea. It's easier for somebody to, to see it if they if they understand what it costs. And can see the the arbitrage, the difference, the high and the low. You know, if you just send them to the makeup aisle, and it's you know, it's like me, almost fifty year old guy. <laughs> there's not a lot of the first. There's no interest, and then the second, you know, there's maybe not the understanding of the cost of the brands, and so you you, you tell them it's nearly the same as eBay. You tell them, hey, you know, look up stuff around your house. Amazon, it's more of hey, go to a store like a Walmart that's got a lot of stuff, stuff that you like. If you're in electronics, games, whatever. And so, you, so they can understand and get a feeling for it a little faster. Okay. And, and then beyond that, now we're in the section, we're scanning up stuff that we know. What kind of metrics should somebody be looking for when they see an item to be able to decide, should I pull the trigger on this item? And if so, uh, you know, how much, how, how many units, what, what is your, what is your go-to? Um, for newer sellers, I try to, tell them the three times rule if you buy it for 10 you got to sell it for 30 you know because they don't understand it's it's a lot to grasp and they don't understand the volatility of the price and free pricers and all the complexities it is amazon fba so if you give them that cushion of you know doubling their money even if even if the price comes down some they you know they're not going to lose so you don't they don't get discouraged um you know it's the risk you try to explain sales rank versus is really where the risk is, but even even sales rank is very complicated because you're looking at a picture in time. You could have looked at you know, like a if you got two books that are both a hundred thousand, one could be selling enough to stay there. The other one could have just sold one and it's on its way back already. <laughs> so you, you it's it's hard to explain. So you you try to give them the risk built in. You try to you know, depending on the cost of the item, maybe. 10 or 20 max, you know, I would tell them no more than 20 of an item. Just, you, 
beginning and new is is also a place where you teach them to spread out you know how do you how do you alleviate your risk you do you buy do you buy 20 of an item or do you buy five or four items so with with similar so that's 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 what i tried and until they get a full grasp you know yesterday i bought 137 uh nerf error refills so they know numbers to me doesn't what kind of buy price did you pay on that? Uh, they were on clearance for ninety seven cents plus ten percent off. Holy cow! And what kind of return do you expect on those? They are selling for fourteen oh nine. They are fifteen thousand in toys. That's a really uh, good rank in toys. Seven dollars and seventy five cents a package. Wow, wow, that's uh, that's pretty nuts. Now, do you ever come across items like that that are maybe light enough that it would justify doing MF over FBA, or are you just completely behind, uh, beyond doing that at this point? Well, there's 137. Um, I'm a one man, the one man show. You know, I run an eBay show, eBay, eBay store, Amazon, a YouTube channel. You know, you just get. So, I've got a wife who is uh, currently, you know, is, is fighting breast cancer, so my time is just so limited that you know, merchant fulfills kind of out of the option. It's it's all I can do to ship eBay when I sell stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you recommend for people who are just starting out though to protect those margins, or would you say just get used to doing FBA and keep it going that way? I would tell them to do FBA because of one simple fact: shipping well on either pl any platform is complicated, and to get it to get it shipped with the right box, the right size box, and all those methods is difficult. And so it's much easier to allow Amazon to handle that in the beginning until you get a grasp on it, especially when you try to start explaining what cubic shipping is. And <laughs> there's just so many ways to ship something, and and if you're not careful, I mean, you can you can just drown. Your, your profit goes out the window if you don't ship correctly. Yep. I, I've seen some of the most uh, uh, horrific uh, shipping things, uh, you know, here with, within my profession. I had a ring shipped to me once. It was a nice tungsten carbide ring, originally retailed for like 250 bucks at Macy's. I sniped it in an auction. I think I paid like $34 for it. Really nice piece. Lady spent eighteen dollars shipping it to me. You know, you know, after paying for a priority, after paying for uh, uh, additional tracking, signature confirmation, insurance. I mean, I've never seen so many labels strapped to a thirty-four dollar uh, item in my entire life. And I, I just messaged her and I'm just like, well, why? Like, why did you? Why did you do this? Never, obviously, never heard back from her. But you, you kind of feel for people like this who are just burning money. So, yeah, there was the post. Uh, I live in a small area north of Huntsville, Alabama. We have a one, one window post office, and um, I, the guy there is Jason. He's a great guy. He's always in the window, um, and he's he's like, man, you're never gonna believe what happened today. I'm like, what happened today? Because he's like, he's got you know they got stories. He's like, he said, you know, I, I had an older couple come in. They've been selling on eBay. You know, they were retired. They were trying to make a little extra money, and something happened that they couldn't. It was it was maybe it was a PO box. It was something they couldn't use UPS, and when they brought it in here and pay for it, which is there's your there's your first mistake you're paying at a at a location retail. Um, the price difference between USPS and UPS, they couldn't believe it. They had been doing eBay for a year and shipped everything UPS, <laughs> and they were they were. He's like, I wonder why we hadn't made as much money as I thought we should. Yeah, because. There's very, very few brands and categories that I can suggest that people utilize UPS. I mean, we're talking, you know, pieces that are one-offs, pieces that are exceptionally delicate, you know, and, and, and you really should have a private account with UPS if you're using them as your primary uh, uh, delivery method. You can get much better rates in retail, like much, much better, like almost a, a third of the price if you have your own account. But if you're walking in and paying UPS retail, that's a little bit nutty. Yeah. Correct. So, so we know hit the stores. Okay. Uh, you know, look for the clearance stuff, work with stuff, you know, pretty much scan everything, right? Scan everything that you can. Right. And that's the other thing, you know, you'll tell them, I tell a newer person, you know, like scan the whole aisle, you know, because they, sometimes they don't understand that. Um, like I was in Costco today, uh, and I was just supposed to be getting two items, but you know, I can't pass by. I was, I was doing a little scanning, until the wife started calling and saying, "Hey, it's time to go," um, and there was um, it was a it was a women's bras. They were a, they were Pumas, and the the small, medium, and large they all had different price points. 
So if you did the medium ones made like eight dollars on on like thirteen, but the other two made like a dollar. So if you just scan the other two and never got the medium, you know there's one in there that that it's a there's a size that works. Same thing. There were some shoes. I, I scanned some shoes, and the shoes were the same way. The eight and a half because uh, it's harder to find size because you know men's feet are not generally smaller. Um, Ten and a half the average size. That one was lower than the rest of them. If you just started in, in the most common one, well, that's the one they produced the most of. And so the smaller size was, you know, you you made money on it, and that the larger size you did not, which is. But if you get larger, like thirteens, they do okay. But it's it's the if it's almost you know I, I teach them when I'm doing toys. Um, you want the odd toy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Most most people have heard of them. Most people understand that there's three guy turtles. There's the you know there's their balls and everything. There's one girl, April. Mm -hmm. You always scan April because there's less of her because she's the only one. Same thing with the Pink you know? Ranger. You know, you always scan the Pink Ranger because they don't make as many of them. Correct, and yep. you know, I have to say it very lightly or whatever. But you know, when when you're looking at dolls, um, when the, all the Walmart clearance was out, I scanned Ken. None of the girls. Except for the uh, the black girls, because they're just one, mm -hmm. and it's the one because they're there are different variations, of everything. But there seems to be only one of the um the of the different ones. So those are the ones that generally make money, and so those are the, that's what I end up selling a lot of it. And try to teach you have to think it through and and, and increase your odds by this stuff is mass produced anyway. So of the mass production, what is the you know, if you're if you're looking at all the Ben Tens and there's a character you've never seen before, chances are that's, that's an oddball. Okay, okay. Well, let me ask you this: You've been doing this for years now, okay? Now, yeah, about five years. Five years of doing this through your experience, and this is a question I love to ask people: What is the biggest mistake you've made so far, and and what did you learn from it in those five years? Um, maybe very early on, like, maybe even an item that you maybe snagged for no good reason. Um, not, not doing some research about IP claims on Amazon to understand that certain companies, we talked about this a little earlier, certain companies file these frivolous claims much more than others. And before I looked one up, um, you know, but just scanning with the phone, go, Hey, you're eligible. I started buying bulb head, uh, and they're notorious for being, you know, they send you a thing saying, We'll we'll distract it. We'll 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 take it off if if you sign this agreement that you'll you'll pay us. I think it's like three hundred thousand dollars if you ever sell our brand again, or something. It's something ridiculous. Letter you get and uh, and I had bought. What was the name of that like brand? Six, six bulb head. I've never. They're one of the ass seen on. They're one of the ass seen on TV groups. Okay. You know, like they make a lot of the lot the shower lights that are out in the yard for Christmas. Those. That's what I had. I had. That first year they were out, they were like super hot. They were only at oh, it was the rank depot. one, wasn't it? I remember. Yeah, it was about rank those. one, and yeah. then you could pick them up for forty five to fifty, and they were selling for like a hundred and twenty. Yep, I remember that. Yeah, there was a lot uh, of buzz in the groups about those. When they went on clearance, um, I was picking them up for twelve bucks, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I filled up like six large boxes full of these things. I had like seventy of them, and and I got a couple of them in there and thinking, you know, I'll send in four, five, ten and see what happens. Yeah, when well, IP claim happens. <laughs> and then I spend the time fighting it and bringing it back. And so now I'm trying to push this on, on eBay, which is a slower, the velocity is sales velocity. So it took two and a half years to sell those things. And I and I lost on, on half of them, four, five, six dollars just to get rid of them. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So now you said you, you pushed back. Did you? Did you choose not to sign any paperwork or just remove like pull through the last year's stock what, what was your recourse on that um i did not you know i started doing some reading and a lot of the amazon forums and stuff to how to, to properly craft a response and the one thing i kept reading was remind amazon what their own rules are you know you did i didn't create the listing you know the pictures on the listing or, or amazon property the listings amazon property Amazon sold on the listing, so the listing was, you know, there's no violations of the listing itself. And so if you said I could sell on it and, and you sold on it and there was nothing wrong with the listing, and and I had store receipts, which is store receipts, I've got, I've, that was a couple of years ago. They were still pretty decent with that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, you, but still it was a it was a correct store receipt that said exactly what the item was, so you can put the ASIN with it. 
you know, all story seeds are not created equal. And so, I, and I was able to prove where it came from. And, and I was also able to remind, I guess I got a good rep that day who reminded them of their own rules and they, they took it down. That was, that's pretty smart, pretty aggressive. Now, obviously though, it doesn't always play out that way. And, you know, no, I, I don't, I don't want to delve too far into it, uh, with you because I know we're going to be talking about this on your channel. Um, um, and by the time this interview actually airs, we will have talked about this three days ago. So people will provide a link for people to be able to check that out. But I guess just in brief, um, you know, maybe not even going so much into Vero violations, uh, copyright infringement, yada, yada, yada. When you walk into just general stores, what do you just stay away from? Like you've been doing this long enough, you know, I'm not even going to scan such and such category or such and such brand. What is on the top of your hit list? Um, any of that whole ass on TV group, you know, they're not all bulbhead. They're all on tail and several others. Um, not only are they notorious for the IP claims, you got to, their quality is, is also notoriously horrible. You know, you see these things and, and, you know, your return rate is going to go up. So it's going to cost you money. And then, you know, Amazon's going to, Amazon's going to investigate the listing because you've got too many returns. <laughs> and, uh, so, it, it, you know, that, that's a nightmare. I, you know, I have a, I have a list that, that I keep on my phone so that to remind me which brands are, you know, there's, there's certain ones that are heavily restricted. HP is one you don't mess with. You can sell it on eBay, but you still have to be careful. Um, there's, there's, there's just certain brands that, that you learn, you know, hey, you know, Apple. I'm a, I'm approved to sell Apple, but there's no way. Yeah. <laughs> They're highly counterfeited. You know, that's that's the thing you got to think. CoverGirl, highly counterfeited. I don't sell on either platform. Mm -hmm. Just you just avoid things that that. Think about if you've been in the flea market and you see a lot of them everywhere. <laughs> There you go. That's and your, and that's while, your while we're on it, too, I want to make sure that I emphasize to people who are watching this, who are thinking about getting into this, thinking about doing FBA, that they're mindful that they don't have their inventory commingled, uh, which is one of the things that can really get you into a lot of trouble. So if you are going to be going this direction, safeguard yourself. Don't commingle your inventory. And as, as Scott was saying, just be very uh, diligent. I mean, the fact that you still carry list on your phone just shows that you're you take this very seriously you're very smart about what you're doing because uh some some of the pictures i showed from saturday on on um in the video of my sourcing saturday and sunday you know somebody goes on instagram hey that's a jansport bag do they still send all the the crazy they were sending out lawyer letters and everything else i think they used there's a company called vories uh they're a lawyer firm that they've got like 230 clients and you know i was like I, it was a good because a good topic because you know i said yes I, I understand that's what they do but they're you can sell them on eBay. They're not a um, they're not a VR company on eBay. So you know as long as you accurately describe it and, and you and you know where you got it from, you can can prove it. Yeah, and, it, and so, it's an actual product, and you're not riding the coattails of somebody else's trademark to try and move uh, an inferior or alternate product. You should be okay. You should be okay. Yeah, it's, be. It, they're 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 backpacks. They're from a ma major sporting retailer who's clearing out all of them. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that 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 uh, those lights that definitely sounds like a, a point of frustration uh, for sure. Let me ask: over the last year, you know, because you, you've been doing this five years, what's one of the greatest things that you feel you've you've gained for your, I guess, your portfolio of intelligence, the, the things that you know within this industry? Last year, what was the, the biggest thing that helped you along? Um, last year was I took advantage of the fact that I knew two platforms, and in April after, you know, four straight years of every other week on the road and carrying on, you know, I, I decided it was time to switch gears and went back into eBay. I had six, 50, between 58 and 66,000 pieces on hand on Amatory. And I'm like, on Amazon Amatory, I'm like, hey, that'll work. And I, I spent the next six months doing uh, eBay and let Amazon ride out. I didn't send a shipment in for six months. And I was able to spend some time at home, uh, my son, who was in college, was able helped me list through the summer. So we pushed the store from what sixty listings to it, we're well over a thousand, or closer to twelve hundred. It's still in the seven hundreds now, but um, you know, was just able to spend some time. You know, it's a grind. I mean, it truly. Yeah, people well, that, understand that diversification is key. You know, we 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 harped on that last week on the show about 
making sure you diversify your portfolio, whether that's uh, alternate e-commerce platforms or whether, you know, you're doing like Joe was doing and you have a, a local facility where people can come purchase stuff or you're placing ads online. But yeah, the diversification and uh, yeah, the grind is also real, you know, go on, go on. What were you going to say about that? Yeah, it just, you know, when I'm on the road, it was, it was four or five, 18 hour days in a row. You just, you just get worn out and the the one thing i love about uh reselling is the you know, the lifestyle you can build you know you're one of the few places that you can design the business plan and you know you're you're everything to it and you can do it like you want to and you should it sh you should enjoy it if, if uh, that's the one thing you somebody's got to enjoy reselling and that kind of stuff in order to be good at this and you know when it, it was starting to feel too much like after so long of a grind and a job and i'm like i just needed to find that you know, there's a local another reseller here. We spent all summer going to yard sales together. I just need to find, I need to find my, for lack of a better way to explain it, you know, my joy in reselling again. You know, I needed some recharge and I needed something different for a while. Yeah, and I, I'm right there with you. The person that actually introduced me to you, uh, somebody that I've worked with in the past, he was telling me about a specific bolo and saying like, hey, you can go out, you can get this, you know, this item right now. You can make $20 a case on this item. It's at this store, this store, and this store. I'm like, cool and he's like and then like two days later he's like did you go get any and i said no he's like how come and i'm like i'm like i just don't want it he's like what do you mean right. he's like you're you're a reseller you, you want the money you know that's what we're here for doing i'm like i'm like there's a reason why i go to the swap meet every weekend you know i i enjoy the open air i enjoy interacting with people i enjoy the negotiations process i i enjoy the mystery of not knowing what i'm gonna find <clears throat> i don't enjoy scrolling through things on my phone going to this store, this store, this store, this store, spending a whole day inside of a car or waiting in line. It, it, can you make great money doing it? Of course. I mean, look at you, look yeah. at your situation and the, and the people that you're working with. You can make great money. But for me, it doesn't bring me enough joy. And so when you say you're, you're talking about doing more yard selling because it makes you happy, I mean, you have to, you, you can lose right. your sanity real quick because, you know, it's, it's like if I offered you a job flipping burgers and told you I'll pay you 40 bucks an hour, you know, it's great money, but you just don't want to do it. And I watch people do that for 25 years. There's no, that ain't enough money. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, and, and yeah, because at the end of the day, the, 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 I think we're old enough that we understand that the money is more of a means to an end. And, you know, it's, it's, it gets us to where we need to go. And I think uh, you're calling me old. I understand that. Uh, there's, I said, the, we, I'm yeah. bundling myself in there. I'm, I'm yeah, 33 a, myself. Uh, yeah. But, uh, in, in a short six weeks, I'll be 50. And there's a, there's a, it's not a midlife crisis, but there's a point in time where you under time becomes more important than, than money. And it, it truly does. And, yep. you know, I, you know, I have, I've only got another year and a half of the kid in school and he'll be off, off be a rocket scientist of some sort. He's an aerospace engineer. And, and it was, it was, a, it was great timing. It was on my, because, you know, my wife got sick. So, you know, it was, it was nice to, you know, everything was already changed. So there was no change. I'm switching back now because I need the time back. You know, the, the difference between eBay and Amazon is really, you can, you can level up on an Amazon as a one person. It's much harder to level up on eBay, even though there's great money on eBay and, you know, as a platform, you know, it's still a viable option. But, uh, you know, and with FBA, you're, it's like you're hiring somebody. It's like to somebody to do that fulfillment side is for someone who is, I've managed employees for 25 years. I don't want employees, but it's like so having a, it's like having a working partner. You know, right, you say, correct. okay, I'm going to handle the sourcing and I'm going to pack it up. I'm going to ship it out to you. You got you got the rest, and they're like, yeah, we got this. I'll do customer relations. I'll do pack and ship. You know, I'll handle the invoicing and payments. I'll take care of the rest. So it is like having a a partner in crime. And I'm I'm right there with you in the sense that, you know, we can essentially go get an infinite amount of dollars. You know, I mean, as much as we're willing to work, we can go get as many dollars as we right. want, but we have a finite amount of time. And, you know, I'm, I am only 33, but I do feel that already. I do feel like the days are getting a little bit shorter and zipping by a little bit quicker day in, day out. And, um, yeah, so for, and people are a little confused by, it. I tell them like the money isn't nearly as important as it was even five years ago, once you get to a certain point, um, because once you have, you know, someone like yourself, you know, you probably have tens of thousands of dollars put up in the bank, you know, each additional dollar you just kind of throw onto the pile, 
Mm. You know, it, you know, a dollar you, you may not spend for another 10 or 15 years. It just doesn't carry the same weight as having a full day off. Yeah. yeah the, the one thing I would tell people is retail arbitrage is a disease and it's, it's hard to shake. I mean, for the, I, you know, for the first four years, you know, the travel was fun because, you know, working in restaurants for 25 years, you know, you're in the same spot all the time. So I was somewhere new for the, at least for the first couple of years. It was, there was very, you know, the first couple of years I, I was like 50,000 miles a year in a car. I was everywhere. Um, and I've been in 39, 40 States doing this chasing stuff. And, you know, just now lately have I stopped to s sort of smell the roses, you know, with Mount Rushmore and there's a video on Niagara Falls. You know, I'd go through these places and never see the sites, you know, except for a Walmart or whatever store I was chasing. And, you know, it's, it's I'm a little more deliberate now that when I'm, when I'm doing stuff. Just... Yeah, no, I understand that completely. For me, when I'm doing my out of town sourcing or, you know, I, I try and get more out of it. I try and make sure it's a town that I want to spend a day or two in. I make sure I, you know, have somebody to either work with or visit while I'm out that direction, you know, make it half vacation, half work, you know, try and try and get the joy out of the situation. So no, that's, just, that's extremely important because it's, it's important to understand that, especially when you're, and I'm sure it's not just reselling or anything else. When you're doing something you absolutely have a passion for, you know, it can consume you and you have to, it, you have to at some point step back and set some boundaries and then set some, if, if not, you know, you know, that, that job you're trying to get away from, you just created it and you know, it's the, all the freedom and all the stuff that, that, that you allured you to reselling or whatever your passion is, you know, has suddenly taken it all back. And so you have to be very careful. You do. Balance is key. Even myself, I, I, I've, I'm trying to get into a new routine now where I spend uh, four hours a day working, four hours a day in fitness, whether, you know, disc golfing or climbing or whatnot, and then four hours a day on recreation, things that I personally enjoy doing, whether it's reading, writing, drawing, uh, you know, uh, reading uh, 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 some news articles, whatever it might be. I try and split my day up that way, and then the rest of the day just goes to movement and eating and nonsense. But, right. you know, that balance – that balance is so key, uh, you know, not only for personal health, mental health and all that, but financial health, too. You know, it's if you go like you're saying, you know, 10, 12, 15 hours a day, several days in a row, that burnout's real. And some people don't bounce back from it. Yeah, that's you know, that's the, was the reason why I was taking the week off between because when I got home, I would not do anything for the next week. So it was kind of made up for not being around the week before. But but still the well what what ends up happening is you you work your ass off for a week you make you know four grand in that week then you take a week off now it's like you made two grand one week and then two right. grand the next and it's like well I probably could have gone half power last week done my two grand enjoyed my time off and then half power this week made my two grand and enjoyed my time off and that balance you know you can come out ahead believe it or not working less and making more you know especially through things like we talked about diversification. So, Scott, I appreciate you so much for coming on and sharing some of these RA tidbits. Now, uh, the big question everyone's going to want to know, how do they get in touch with you? Because you have some big stuff going on over on your end. Yeah, they can they can find me on YouTube. Uh, the beard, or I, I took the V off, just Bearded Picker. Uh, and, you know, I've teamed up with, with Shane and, and Wade. We're, we're doing a Patreon where we're trying to help people. You know, there's a there's a level where they can get personal help from us. The phone just rang, so I'm gonna call someone back in a minute. Um, but there, there's also we we've come up with a a company that tech allows us to text out bolos as we're in stores, and so they're they're getting real time information. You know, even though like today I did not buy the items in Costco, but you know, I, you can't stop like I can't stop looking. So you know, if I find something. You know, I send it out. I send a couple of them out saying, "Hey, you guys, here's a grocery item. Here's this." In Costco, if you're a member, Costco doesn't care how much you buy. <laughs> they they <laughs> prefer you buy the entire shelf, honestly. If you want the pallet, they're they're gonna ask you where do you want to load it. Because, mm -hmm. and so yeah, YouTube's the easiest way. I'm, I'm actually before the show, I'm actually building a website, so which will have everything where it lands together. Now, your Facebook page, that's how I was able to get in touch with you. I'd actually recommend people go check that out, too. Where's that at on Facebook? It's just Scott Zilke. It's just, I've, there's a... Oh, your, there's, uh, your Fortunes page. Uh, where, oh, where we Fortunes get, and Reselling? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our Sunday show. There's a, we got a five panel. Or, it's now six. We had another six of us on a panel show. 
and then Shane and I do a show Friday night, so we we throw everything in there too because we didn't want to have two of them. Okay. So yeah, but fortunes and reselling, it's it's just just a lot of information on eBay, Amazon, social media, what whatever you need help with, you can post questions in there, and there's a lot of people, a lot of knowledge, and we answer questions as well. But that's 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 a fun place. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure that we get all those links down in the description as well. And thank you again so much, Scott, for coming on air with us. And we look forward to our next discussion with you. Awesome. Look forward to it.